Hey guys, what's going on? Happy Monday, March 25th, 2024. Uh, I actually intended this uh, video to go live on Facebook and all of a sudden my ability to go live on Facebook has apparently been disabled uh, with absolutely no explanation whatsoever. Uh, so I don't know what's going on with that, guys. Uh, we'll try to get that reestablished as soon as possible. Uh, I like to do that in case somebody's out there and watching and wants to jump in. Uh, while I'm while I'm live and uh, you know ask questions or or uh, you know send comments or whatever. A um, couple things I just want to touch on, guys. Hadn't really put up any content in over a week, uh, so really nothing breaking news wise. But a couple recap type things that I just want to kind of get out there. Um, you know the main one, guys, is you know if you followed some of my very recent content, just last few videos kind of thing, or you've seen me on some of the other platforms talking about it is that I've, I've kind of settled on my own personal thesis for what I think is going to happen and how I think it's going to play out um, in terms of the, the, the negative wave of economic events that, that, are, that are coming. And we know they're coming, guys. We know they're coming because we've seen it throughout history. We've just seen it over and over again every 5 to 15 years, uh, some major, massive you know, seminal event or events occurs with regard to the U.S. economy. It's, 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 it's a massive shakeout kind of situation. Uh, you know, 90% of the people lose wealth, 10% uh, or less aggregate that wealth and get wealthier. And it's just, it's just a process and it's played out so many times. There, there's nothing you could do to convince, you could put a crystal ball in front of me and say, look in this crystal ball, there's no economic downturn ever that's going to happen again. And I won't believe it. I'm just not going to believe it. Um, there, there's 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 too much precedent for it. There's too much historical basis for it. There's too much evidence of it coming. I mean, on and on and on. So for me, and, and again, I don't you know I don't voice this on anybody. Okay, guys, you got to formulate your own conclusions, and 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 you may generally agree with me, but have some nuances that are different, or you might you might totally disagree with it, or totally adopt this as your own thesis. No matter which one of those things you do, it's it's totally on you to do that. Um, for me, I really believe there are three major factors that are going to blend together within a 10-year period. Could be within a seven, five-year period. Probably some degree of separation between these three things. They're not all going to literally hit on the same day or the same month or even in the same year. Um, but I really think the three things that that I'm that I've got my eye on are, number one, a second sizable wave of inflation largely based on the 2020 pandemic. I mean, not literally just the 2020 pandemic, but that would be kind of the crux of it, okay? With that inflation coming in on top of other money creation that's going on either right before it, you know, shortly after it, et cetera, et cetera. So another big tsunami of inflation, you know, equaling or dwarfing the 2022 9% inflation episode that we dealt with, okay? So that's number one. Number, And I'm going to come back to that one. There's an important thing i got to say about that one, but I, go, I want to get through these three. Number two um, is the commercial real estate crisis unfolding and then multiplying in effect due to derivative investments. So it's not just the loans going bad and the banks going bad because of the loans, but all the derivative multiplicative investments tied to commercial real estate or other sectors that start going down because of commercial real estate. I mean, if, let's say commercial real estate happens to affect residential housing and there's a bunch of derivatives on residential housing. That's going to be a problem, too. So I think, you know, the commercial real estate is the catalyst, but I don't necessarily think it's the end point. It's just definitely going to be a catalyst because of the, you know, the raft of bad loans that we're going to see, uh, you know, ripple across the economy in the in the latter 2020s, the second half of the 2020s. So that's a huge one. And then lastly, um, the 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 fact that on the other side of the decade, when we get into the 2030s, you are going to see Social Security and Medicare going broke and essentially causing, um, you know, another round of crisis or you know, massive money printing or inflationary activity that maybe, you know, you know, causes a, a loss of faith in the dollar, you know, something, something seismic will happen with regard to 
Social Security and Medicare going broke in the 2030s. Now, you know, the, the U.S. government has predicted that it's going to make it till 2041, I think. That's the latest number I've seen. I, I don't believe any of it, guys. Okay, every year there's projections that are false, you know, they're, they're, they're false either in, you know, in, in, in their intent, uh, you know, the, the, in other words, we're being misled, or it just, they just turn out to be wrong. And I mean, look, they're wrong about everything, guys. They're wrong about everything. Okay, I mean, what, you know, name one massive prediction that the United States government gets, gets right. Okay, they don't get anything right. So they're not going to get 2041 right when it comes to Social Security, Medicare. I would move that way back to probably some of the original projections, mid 2030s, and maybe even earlier. In fact, I'm going to bet on earlier. I'm going to bet on something earlier than 2035, but after 2030. Okay, so so that series of things, guys: massive tsunami of inflation, commercial real estate collapse uh, with multiplicative effect, and uh, Social Security, Medicare going broke in the early 2030s. Those three things, guys, are gonna are gonna create a an outsized and that is a gentle way of saying it um, economic crisis uh, in the United States and globally. I mean, this isn't just gonna be the United States. When I mean, we talk about things like loss of dollar confidence, you lost, you know, dollar collapse, uh, you know, commercial real estate banking system uh, loans going bad, banks going under. That oftentimes has an international uh, implication to it. Um, so this is going to be global, guys. Okay, and um, you know that's the incredible part of it. But um, you know, so so the thing is, guys, coming back to the first point about the inflation. You know, a lot of people are going to say, "What are you talking about, Chris?" The nine percent inflation in 2022 was the pandemic, and I'm going to sit here and say to you guys, I'm going to contend that inflation doesn't happen that fast. I mean, inflation, first of all, is expansion of money supply uh, and then times velocity, okay? You don't get the velocity in two years. I mean, you're not gonna, you're not gonna print money in the spring of 2020 and you've gotten all the velocity out of it by, by May 2022 or whatever, June 2022. You're just not gonna get it, okay? It's too fast. It's, it can't be the same money, okay? But I admit, I'm not an economist and I'm not, I don't work at the Federal Reserve. So maybe I'm wrong about that, um, but I don't think I am. And one of the things I really want to research, guys, I think if you want to look to history, if you say, Chris, is there any precedent that you can point to? Is there something you can say? Yeah, that's, that's when it happened before like this. You know, this is where I see a time lag of 5, 10, 15 years. <clears throat> and I've mentioned this before, guys. I go back to the 60s and 70s. I go back to Vietnam, you know, 1961, uh, President Kennedy getting us involved deeper and deeper into that. Um, um, Lyndon Johnson taking over, doing his Great Society programs, uh, spending a lot of money on on uh, internal programs within the United States. Uh, and then lastly, the kicker, August 1971 decoupled from the gold gold standard and we're really off and running at that point into an inflationary kind of, you know, schema, okay, <laughs> to, to how the United States handles monetary policy. So I think if you, you know, that's the research that I need to do is, you know, and as soon as I can do it, guys, I'll present it here and we, we would love to see commentary on that or questions about that. But I, you know, when you look at that, guys, you look at it and you're like, wow, that was a rough 1960s. Where did the inflation come? The late 1970s. I mean, I mean, even the gold standard decoupling. I mean, you think that would be some triggering inflationary event. I mean, that was in 71. So that, what, six, seven years later, we really started to feel the pain of that thing. Okay? Uh, and and that's, just the, that's just the trailing edge of all the activity from the 60s. I mean, go all the way back to 61 and then mark that off and go back to the late 70s. You're talking about 15, 16 years before, you know, all the spending that went into Vietnam and stuff like that, you know, started to catch up to us, right? So that that's where I really think, guys, that we have a, a situation, okay, um, is when you look at, you know, shout out to Jersey Shore there. Um, you know, that's where we really see how this stuff unfolds historically even when it looks like the united states is being profligate it took a decade you know give or take a few years it took a decade for it to hit 
Okay, so I really think that that pandemic fueled inflation plus plus the usual debt monetization that goes on. I mean, the usual money printing. I mean, it's not like it stopped, right? It's not like it wasn't happening before the pandemic and then it happened. Yeah, you know, then it didn't happen afterwards. I mean, the pandemic just was like a massive spike to it, right? And then you had the usual stuff before and after, right? So wrap all that together, and I don't think you see that until 2027, 2028, 2029. Okay, and then the other thing, guys, I got to—I think I posted this over the weekend in the Facebook feed. Um, You know, it it should be the same article. If it's not, it's close. But there was an article about the commercial real estate loans really picking up steam in terms of the number of defaults on these loans. And interestingly, this particular article said that in the year 2027 alone. Now, I've told you guys, 23 to 28 is the sweet spot, right? That's those are the years that this stuff is happening. 23 to 28. From 23 to 28, but in 2027 alone, this article, I think it's the article I posted in the Facebook feed, 2.2 trillion in commercial real estate loans coming due. Now, they may not all go bad, but but that's the year that you get the biggest amount according to this article. Okay, so that's what like two and a half years away essentially. Okay, so so that's something to circle on your calendar. So if I'm right about the inflation coming later in the decade, and it coincides with let's say let's say the worst year in the commercial crisis, commercial real estate crisis is 27. Now you get it all kind of at the same time. And what are they going to do? Print even more money to bail out the banks that are caught up in that commercial real estate situation, right? Adding to the inflation, adding to to what's happening, uh, you know, on the inflationary side of things. So uh, really, really dark days ahead guys is my is my personal opinion and these are the reasons why and you guys are going to hear me saying a lot of stuff about this i'm going to be coming in with a lot of these rep you know repetitive arguments about you know why this is going to happen this way and why i think it's going to happen this way um you know i really don't know anything guys like you know let me let me be really clear i don't know a damn thing uh, I'm just observing and, and educated guessing and looking back at history and trying to prepare. And this is this is what I see. So I want you guys to hear it, chop it up, dice it, slice it, whatever, you know, whatever you end up doing with it. But um, man, I don't think it's going to be good if I turn out to be right. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, we'll get this up on different platforms. Uh, definitely appreciate you guys uh, watching. And until next time, uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. All right, guys, have a good night.